Well, welcome back to the uh, U.S. Latvia Business Forum today. Hope you enjoyed your coffee break and uh, now get started with the final pa panel discussion of the afternoon. Uh, this panel discussion is entitled Doing Business in Latvia, the Perspective, the perspective of Americans. The panel will be moderated by Mr. Ivar Slokenbergs, President of the American Chamber of Commerce in Latvia, and he, Mr. Slokenbergs will also introduce the other speakers in today's panel. Hello. Uh, it's great to see you all here. The American Chamber of Commerce uh, in Latvia uh, was very pleased to cooperate with the Latvian government in helping to bring you all here. Uh, I would love to tell you all about the chamber, but we have, uh, don't have that much time. But maybe tomorrow at the embassy event, tomorrow morning, we'll talk about what the chamber can do for you. And please uh, consider the chamber a resource for you to learn about what's going on in, La in Latvia, uh, how to make connections here. Um, we've actually just hot off the presses of our n latest um, member directory, just printed hours ago. Uh, there's a copy on your chairs, so please take that with you as well. So, without further ado, I would like to introduce our uh, panelists, Americans or American businesses doing business in Latvia already. I'll do some introductions, then we'll do some initial questions from my side, and we hope that there will be additional questions from you as well either uh, today or in the other events um, in, the, in the next day or two. Let's start with Carlos Tavos on the end here. He's the Senior Vice President for Baltic States of NCH Capital, Inc. He's from Berks County, PA, just out of uh, Philadelphia. He has a BS in agronomy from Penn State, MBA from Harvard Business School. He uh, managed a, a big farm in, in Maryland, spent time down in, in Honduras with Dole Fruit, uh, was in bank management at Bank One in Ohio, and then in 93 he came to Latvia. He was uh, one of the co-founders and the first president of the Riga Stock Exchange, which today is one of the NASDAQ OMX uh, group of uh, stock exchange companies. He uh, joined uh, NCH Capital in 96. It was one of the earliest Western investors in the former Soviet Union. It has over $3.5 billion of capital under management. In Latvia, it's made uh, close to $300 million in, uh, dollars, uh, in investments in real estate projects, uh, some high-tech companies, uh, pork farming, uh, manufacture of prefab housing, very diverse uh, portfolio. Next, moving here to Jerry. Jerry's from DeKalb County, Illinois. A farm, a farm hand from uh, west, west of, way west of Michigan, uh, west, way west of Chicago. Sorry, Jerry. Uh, BS in finance and, and international business from Illinois State. Worked at Caterpillar in the U.S. in corporate finance, and then in the early '90s he joins the Peace Corps. He was part of the first group of Peace Corps volunteers uh, assigned to the Baltics or the former Soviet Union, and in '92 ended up in in Estonia, just north of us. And uh, after his service as a business development specialist at the Peace Corps, made his way down uh, to uh, Latvia, working with uh, PepsiCo, and uh, then eventually starting his own uh, uh, investments. He's invested in various sectors over the years, in, um, in real estates, in energy, manufacturing, shipping, and trade. Presently, the, uh, he and his partner have a sizable uh, portfolio of, of commercial real estate investments. Also, Jerry is one of the major philanthropists uh, in Latvia. He started, he's the chairman and, and the, uh, the, the founder of the Ronald McDonald House uh, Charities in Latvia. They have a great project, a mobile medical facility that travels on a trailer throughout Latvia, providing um, medical assistance to uh, the children in the rural areas of Latvia. That's all thanks to Jerry's initiative. He's also my my. Uh, immediate predecessor as president of the chamber and now just recently elected as the chairman of the Foreign Investors Council in Latvia, which is a more broad-based policy-making uh, organization of all the uh, largest investors and all the foreign chambers working closely with the governments to improve uh, legislation to make Latvia a more attractive place for doing business. Moving on to Agnes Kakos, right uh, to my left. He's the director of ACOM in the Baltic region. He's from Milwaukee, an architect uh, by education at the University of uh, Wisconsin, Milwaukee School of Architecture and Urban Planning. Also do a master's degrees in the same subjects, architecture and, and urban planning. He spent eight years at OWPP, 
uh, a big uh, Chicago-based architecture, engineering, and consulting services firm. Today they're known as Canon Design. As, uh, he was a principal, or, uh, a partner, uh, and director of its consulting practice, and led many challenging projects for the city of Chicago, the state of Illinois, the Mercantile Exchange in Chicago, the Federal Reserve Bank, very experienced guy. He came to Latvia in 2007. He's the director of Baltic region uh, for ACOM. Uh, if you don't know, it's a leading American construction and engineering firm. Fortune 500, uh, 500 listed on New York Stock Exchange, headquartered in LA, uh, doing business in many, many countries around the world. He's also the leader of their, uh, here in the Baltics, so their transportation business line. There's a big project being worked on, it's called Rail Baltica, uh, connecting the three Baltic states with a rail line and also connecting with the Western European rail network. So very exciting. Next is uh, Egberts Borita. He's the director of Cytex Shared Services Center in Latvia. I'm introducing people in, in the order that they arrived in Latvia. So, <laughs> so 93, 94, 95. 2007 uh, and now 2009. Egbert is, is Dutch, he's from the Netherlands, a chemical engineer uh, at the University of, University of Delft in the Netherlands, but later got his MBA at uh, IMD in Lausanne, Switzerland. He started at, uh, at uh, Unilever, uh, later went to UCB Chemicals, which is a US company, which is later in 2005, uh, changed its name to SciTech Industries, Inc. So SciTech is a global specialty chemicals and materials company headquartered in Woodland Park, New Jersey, just out of, uh, outside of New York, also listed on the uh, stock exchange in New York. Uh, last year they had $3 billion uh, dollars of, of, of net sales globally. Uh, he worked in, in, in Brussels for a long time, but uh, came to, to Latvia in 2009 to start up a, a Greenfield Shared Services Center which provides services for finance, HR, IT, data management, and procurement. They service over $2.5 billion worth of the SciTech business, global business, and service 5,500 employees from here in Latvia. He's also a fellow board member of Amchow, who was just elected uh, very recently. So with those introductions, we have a, a, a diverse group, uh, a diverse panel uh, with various backgrounds, and I would like to start off a, a question to Carlos. NCH has been in Latvia now almost 20 years. You even opened up a large shopping complex at the depth of the um, of the downturn, I think, in 2009. And w so, what is it that has kept NCH investing in Latvia over this period? And what's your outlook for the future? Okay. Good morning. I can still tell you good morning. Uh, so. All of us, uh, being from American business, we don't mind a little product placement or advertising, so I would have you turn your heads and, and see our wonderful product that we're just, uh, this Gibson factory, which we're right now in the completion of construction. So uh, that's the type of, one of the type of products that uh, we're offering to the market. Uh, one of the reasons we're still here is because uh, such opportunities are available. Uh, we actually bought it two years ago at the, you know, when it was, at the same time we opened our shopping center, which was bad timing for us, but good timing then to buy this project, which was uh, completely unfinished. So we're, we're a fund that we're, uh, we're very uh, focused in on, uh, on price, so we're value investors. If we think we can get a good price, uh, if it looks like a good price, we will invest before many others. So many others now look at us and say, uh, are these guys buying or, or, or selling? So we're buying. Uh, and why? This country, you know, I would, I would qualify it for uh, main reasons. One is, which in real estate is critical, location, location, location. Uh, in Northeast Europe, it's as good as you can get. There are other very good locations, but we're part of those very good locations. We definitely are closer than China and India for those people requiring, you know, quality uh, workforce service, etc., at a close location and very understandable. Second, uh, I think it's become very clear in the past several years. This uh, this crisis has highlighted it and how we've dealt with it that there isn't so much an east-west European divide. It's really more north-south. And all Baltic states clearly belong in the north. Uh, and we will prove that going forward. Uh, so 
one can invest basically in the, you know, we call it Nordic region, because we can't call ourselves Scandinavian, but Nordic is more encompassing. So one can invest basically in what, uh, you know, in Scandinavia as if it was 20 to 40 years ago. Uh, third reason is that there are very clear trends that exist in this part of the world. And one of them is what's called convergence, that our living standards, even in the bad times, may take a uh, step uh, or may, may take a recess, but uh, there's a convergence of the living standards to West European standards. When Latvia regained its independence, uh, Latvia had about 25% uh, living standards on an individual basis compared to Western Europe. Today we're already 55% and we're, and we're trending up. Uh, so one can forecast things here. Uh, and last, I would say that things happen very fast here, both good and bad. But uh, even if we go through a very deep crisis, we come back very quickly. Uh, as a friend of mine said, uh, we live in dog years here. So something that takes seven years in the West, we are able to accomplish it here in one year. So we're still here. The trends are still all there. It's Boy, you can't change a location, you know. Uh, it's still location, location, location. Uh, thank you, Carla. Uh, my next question then is to Jerry. Uh, Jerry, and, and with all due respect to Carlos and his company, the Carlos manages uh, other people's money and invests that in Latvia. You and your partner have been investing your own money here as uh, as private entrepreneurs now for almost just as long since the mid '90s. What is uh, what is it that uh, uh, how do you characterize your commitment to doing business here? And what, uh, what's, uh, what's next for you? Well, um, good afternoon, everyone, now that we're finished with the morning. Um, my, uh, very briefly, a, a bit of, a very brief, brief bit of background about our company. Uh, we, my partner and I, and one other American, also ex-Peace Corps volunteer, uh, who served in Latvia, we own um, a, a real estate investment fund with some investments also in energy and manufacturing, but largely real estate based uh, with assets uh, of around between 40 and 50 million dollars, whether you're, depending on whether you're asking me or our bank. Um, <laughs> we, we do, as Eva said, we do invest our own capital. <clears throat> we don't represent any other investors. So my outlook on Latvia and the region is entirely based on one that is um, going to hopefully result in a um, healthy and successful retirement, um, but we have all of our financial eggs in this basket, so we are fully committed to um, Latvia and the Baltics, but our base is clearly in uh, Latvia, and it has been for many years and will continue to be for some what I think are very good reasons. Uh, the first is that this um, crisis that has that is still in some way uh, holding on to Europe is in some sense really not terribly important in Latvia. And I say that in the sense of uh, having been here and having seen the changes that were wrought on Latvia after independence from the Soviet Union and having uh, been here through the uh, Russian crisis in 98, I've realized that um, the Latvians are an incredibly tough group of people and when you measure the impact of the crisis that's ongoing now or as, as in some sense finished in Latvia and you compare it to what uh, the society has gone through uh, in the early years after independence uh, you can see it's, it's relatively minor in terms of the impact on, uh, on individual lives and that it's pretty appealing to an investor. These are a tough group of people with a tremendously good work ethic, and they don't let they don't let small crises um, uh, get them get them down. As Carlos said, um, with a strong sense of the historical place of Latvia, it really, in my opinion, belongs in the Nordic group of countries. And were it not for the annexation of the Soviet Union at the end of World War II. Um, it, I think we, the rest of the world would think the same. And um, with the current divide in North and South, as Carlos mentioned, 
Um, Latvia is very clearly among the northern group of countries. Uh, with the fastest growing economy in the first quarter of 2012, uh, with a macroeconomic situation that is rather healthy, it's clear to us as to NCH that um, the future is for Latvia uh, amongst the Nordic group of countries. And that's a very good region for us to be in. One of the, one of the reasons that um, I'm a big fan of Latvia isn't so directly related to our business personally, but to, the, to Latvia generally as a place to invest. And that's its uh, familiarity and comfort in working within and around the Russian market. Now, of course, the Russia is a source of um, all sorts of things, um, all sorts of trouble for Latvia in its past, and much of its history is um, written by its relation with Russia. Um, however, and I say Russia with the sense of Russia and the CIS market uh, largely, there is no place that I'm aware of where um, a where a population has such um, fluency within the language of business and culture within that uh, Russian and CIS market. And that's um, pretty important considering an outside investor wishing to access or serve a Russian market but wishing for the uh, protection of investment and the transparency that being within an EU member state allows and add to that the location um, very close to the nerve center of Russia being Moscow. Um, and, and Latvia is, a, in my mind, um, a very attractive place um, to, to invest and to stay. And we don't have any plans of leaving. Okay, thanks, Jerry. I'm going to turn to Arnas now, maybe with a more specific question uh, regarding your work in uh, transport and infrastructure. Uh, there was a present, several presentations earlier already uh, regarding Latvia as a, as a transit uh, country. Can you maybe add your view as a service provider to potential investors in, in transport and infrastructure? How do you see this notion of Latvia as a, as a transit country? Um, how does the infrastructure measure up and, and what are the plans? Um, thank you. Uh, to kind of address that question, I'll really talk in two themes. One um, related to gateways, as was reinforced earlier in the in that previous transport panel, and and secondly the theme of speed. Um, we saw even in the IT presentations this this home market of ours and this gateway that we have. Um, is, is becoming larger. Uh, the home market is getting larger because of the need to connect uh, people, to connect freight, to connect goods and services. Um, and as that home market gets bigger, uh, the infrastructure to support it um, has to improve. And in IT, it's a little easier because it's virtual. Um, so, uh, but when it comes to transportation, uh, to expand that home market is truly about um, improving the the connections, the flexibility, and and the transport infrastructure itself. Um, when it comes to speed, Latvia has done quite a bit to improve transit, to improve connectivity through policy, uh, through these pre-declarations and and border-related procedures that have that have improved the flow of goods. The next sp step uh, in in this development is really to better and improve the infrastructure that that exists here. Um, based on the uh, gaining independence after the Soviet um, occupation, there's a lot of work to be done here in the Baltic states when it comes to trend, uh, to infrastructure, uh, and in all modes, in roads, in air, in rail, as well as sea transport. Um, all of these networks have uh, been aged. They need improvements. And we, as a service provider, are seeing more and more opportunities in all three of the Baltic countries, um, and even more so here in Latvia, about the government investing more and more to improve uh, these, these infrastructure networks, um, mainly to provide the flexibility for the customers or you as clients. Um, to, to move these goods back and forth. Um, we're starting to see larger projects in the major cities where most of the population actually sits in, in Latvia. Um, 
making sure that the transit and road networks and rail networks around each of these major transit hubs, one being here, Riga, um, are such that it gives flexibility. So ring roads that are being created, um, new rail extensions on both sides of the Delgava River to expand the port operations to both, to both sides, all in the favor of expanding and increasing connectivity. We were personally, uh, as AECOM, involved in the feasibility study for Rail Baltica, as, in, as Ivars mentioned, um, where the study concluded that this market, this northern European market, um, can allow for a larger fast conventional rail service that connects to the European Union um, using European Union-gauged uh, rail networks. It's essential for the European Union um, and their 10T network to be connected. This is the last little gap in that European network that still needs to be implemented. Even though the project is a mega project, uh, as you would define it in, in, in any country's terms, um, it's one that needs to move forward and the government needs to, to make their decisions here in Latvia as well as Estonia and Lithuania to move this type of project forward. Again, increasing flexibility for industry, increasing flexibility for consumers and goods to move in either a north-south direction or an east-west direction, uh, uh, et cetera. So what, it, what that all means is these larger mega projects that are being contemplated and, and designed currently, that brings opportunities for uh, service providers such as ours, as well as other industries to take advantage of of that idea and co-locate in places that link to that infrastructure. Um, the amount of opportunities I can't even comprehend that will be given based on this new north-south corridor and um, any industry that's working in any kind of light freight transit where your products need to be moved into Central Europe or even north into to farther reaches north. Um, this will be one of those corridors that will allow you to do so with direct connections to all the other three Baltic states and the, uh, the uh, Central European position. So there's many opportunities for engineers, designers, um, as well as all of the construction industries to build such projects that really don't have any precedent uh, here in the Baltic states and need, need the, the requisite experience from firms who have done that type of work uh, globally. And um, that's why we're here. That's why we're here to stay, um, because we know those opportunities exist and, and will continue to be so uh, for the coming years. Okay, thanks, Sam. Uh, Edwards, you are one of the most recent arrivals, uh, or uh, arrival as far as a visible U.S. investment, or SciTech, SciTech's investment. And you made this decision in 2009, in the, middle, in the midst of the, of the, of the crisis. Can you tell us about uh, your decision or Scitech's decision to come to Latvia and what's been your experience? Yeah, yeah, I can. Um, let me first share a little bit about Scitech so you understand the, uh, the, the background or the concept of, uh, of what we're doing here. So Scitech is a specialty material, specialty chemicals company. We make, um, for example, engineered material, carbon fiber-based engineered materials to build lightweight planes and, and, and other high-performance products. Uh, we make coating resins, eco-friendly coating resins for, for the paint and coatings industry. And we make, for example, mining chemicals to help mining companies to extract more metal from the ore in a more environmentally friendly way. Um, but um, we, like you have said, we, we're a U.S. listed company, turnover about three billion. Um, and we have about five and a half thousand people globally uh, distributed across the regions. Um, now, none of this we do in, in Latvia, um, so people often ask me why, why Latvia, <laughs> right? <laughs> so we came to Latvia to set up um, uh, a, a new organization which, uh, which we call uh, Shared Services, uh, and that's a, a services organization to service the, the, the mother company, SciTech. And we deliver services in the, in the area of, of finance, uh, accounting, um, various accounting uh, disciplines in uh, human resources, uh, in procurement, uh, IT, data management. Um, and these services are all provided to uh, SciTech entities elsewhere in the world, primarily in North America, US, uh, Canada, and, and in Europe. 
Um, today, um, I employ about 150 people. Um, even though we arrived in uh, in uh, in Latvia only in, in 2010, we started delivering our services. Uh, in fact, in July 2010. So, a bit more specific on your in your question, uh, why why Latvia? Uh, well, in fact, in 2009, indeed, we we took the decision to go to Latvia. Um, there was a location team looking at a whole range of criteria um, uh, in order to do an assessment of, of, of the, the right location. Um, we f fairly quickly came to a conclusion that Eastern Europe is the, is the right location in general for, for our company um, because of the need of, of um, languages. We need to be able to service our, our, our company, our customers and our suppliers uh, with uh, six languages in total um, and um, we need to service mainly North America and Europe and that ma makes Eastern Europe uh, a natural location in terms of, in terms of time zones. Um, but there was a whole range of criteria and in, in fact uh, there were a number of things important like uh, Latvia being a NATO member, an EU member, uh, good business environment, stable political situation, uh, good living conditions, but I would say uh, there were three primary reasons why we, we chose Riga as opposed to some other uh, s cities in Eastern Europe. Um, and one of them, I would say, is, is around people. Um, the, uh, well, Riga being uh, a capital uh, was important with well, close to a million people living in and around uh, uh, the Riga region. Um, in, in the disciplines in which we recruit, there are more than 20,000 students uh, graduating uh, every year. Um, as you heard this morning uh, from the Prime Minister, that, that is a cons it, it is a concern for Latvia that a lot of that talent uh, is, is leaving the country. Um, well, as a business, you can take that as an opportunity and, and, and use that talent uh, in, in, in the country. Um, and the, the other reason is also uh, the language skills. Um, as a US company, the, the company language is English, so everybody speaks English. But on top of that, we need to s provide services in, in Spanish, in Italian, in German, uh, Norwegian, Dutch. Um, and in Latvia, we've been able to, uh, to, to find the, the people that can deliver the services and can also uh, uh, speak the, the right languages. So people was one. Uh, another key point I would say was uh, accessibility. Because as a shared service organization, we need frequent interaction with our other locations. Um, locations in Europe, locations in the US uh, mainly. And with uh, the airport in Riga being um, a, a major hub uh, for this region, it's fairly easy for us to um, to get people into Riga uh, from our locations and also to send people from the Riga organization out to, uh, uh, to our European uh, organizations. Um, for the US, I would say it's a little bit more difficult to, to get that direct. Uh, uh, it was mentioned this morning there, uh, there is a flight into New York, that, that's true, but I think it's only once a week. Um, so normally uh, people need to fly via a connection, but that's uh, still reason reasonable ac uh, accessibility. Um, and then, um, so accessibility was the second one. The last, the last one is the, the IT infrastructure. As a shared services organization, we need to be able to rely on our IT systems to be able to connect with the IT systems of SciTech and to, with the IT systems of, of any other provider that we, we're using. Um, we use uh, more than 100 uh, software systems in our shared service organization, um, and we need to be able to, to rely on the, uh, the infrastructure availability. And um, that was uh, rated very high in, uh, in, in, I can't remember exactly what the location was, probably number four. Um, but uh, it, it turns out to, uh, to be working very well. So um, people in accessibility and IT infrastructure were the, the key differentiating factors, I would say. Um, what I can say is that this, this venture has been uh, very successful for us. Um, we are continuing to incre increase the scope of, uh, of, of the shared services organization. Uh, we started off with, well, nobody in July 2010 uh, to an organization of 125 
uh, last year. Um, now I have 150 people and uh, we're looking to grow to about 180 people by the end of the year. Um, so it's seen as very successful and it's, it's a good uh, ground for uh, good quality people, I would say. Okay, thank you. I got well, I would like to give now opportunity for our, our guests to um, present some questions to our distinguished panel, if there are any. Well, I'll take that opportunity. Maybe, uh, Carl, uh, in your portfolio of companies, there are these uh, two high-tech companies, uh, Groglas and Sudrebe. Uh, I think uh, implementing some leading-edge technology. Can you maybe make a, a comment uh, about the Latin um, high-tech industry and the potential that you see in the science that's being developed here? Thanks. So we have two, uh, part of our very diversified portfolio, we have two companies. Sidrebe is the older one. Actually, Sidrebe has been in business 50 years. It comes out of the Soviet uh, aerospace and defense industry, and it manufactures these huge vacuum chambers for coating, nano coating of materials. Uh, to me, it's a, an example of what could have been in many ways because uh, coming out of this, this is one of the few high-tech companies in Latvia and even in the Baltic states that really survived. Uh, there could have been a lot, lot more, uh, which does show a lot of the potential that is here, or at least used to be here, at least uh, from the Soviet times. There was a new, new people coming in their place. Uh, but so, we made this investment in Sidrebe uh, and Sidrebe exports around the world. We have uh, our second, our first place uh, country that buys our equipment is uh, Holland, second is the US, third is Korea, fourth is Japan. So it is truly a global company. Uh, and as was mentioned before, our people here are very global. They feel very comfortable operating around the world. Being in a small country, being in a gateway location where you have visitors sometimes whether you like it or not uh, the positive side is you you're exposed to uh, you're exposed to all the global trends and very quickly and immediately so uh, and that's from the top down to the lowest person there's you know they feel global um, so that's one of the positives uh, the negative was that there could have been a lot more. You know, it's always, to me, it's, I, I feel sad that, you know, just like when I go to Denmark and see the countryside, you know, that's how Latvia would have looked had it not been occupied. So, but that's, uh, that's for us to, you know, bring back and, and, and build something for the future. But the potential is definitely there. Uh, then from Sidrebe, we built a much bigger company, what's called Groglass, and we actually uh, put very high-tech coatings on glass for, uh, so it increases the transparency of uh, picture frames, for example, so you don't have a reflection. It's, we're in the Louvre, uh, we're, we're in the uh, Dutch National Museum, uh, we're, on, we're in Bang & Olufsen uh, high-tech TVs, uh, et cetera. Again, it's a perfect location. Uh, we import the glass, we import it from around the world, we import it from Europe, we import it from uh, Israel, we import it from China. We do the coating and we export it around the around the world. Uh, we used to have quite a few consultants flying in, uh, perhaps more from the U.S. and elsewhere. But uh, in the end, we replace them with all local talent. Right now, uh, we don't have, I don't think, any consultant except a little bit in in marketing uh, to help us find the uh, find uh, f find the right contacts and, and establish the right strategy. Uh, but the, definitely the technical talent is there, uh, and it's the new, uh, you know, it's the people in their 20s and early 30s that are leading this company and developing the new technology. So again, it's, they feel very comfortable in, in the, so uh, we feel very good. We have, uh, we're lacking in nothing in, uh, in the technology side. Uh, we just need the more opportunities for, for the sales. So we can do it all here. Okay, great. There's a question. Um, the panel has universally said that Latvia is a good place to invest. Rough figures. What kind of return of investment are you seeing? Well, 
we have no upper limit. <laughs> uh, we target markets that uh, if we don't achieve 12% IRRs, uh, we wouldn't be looking at it, whether it's in real estate or, or other projects. Uh, we like to target uh, projects that are 20% or higher IRRs. Of course, life is as it is. You know, you're sometimes too optimistic on paper and, and life forces you down. But uh, overall, NCH's experience in the region has been, uh, both in the whole region and in Latvia, has been uh, between 12 and 20% IRR, year over year, almost 20 years. I, I would agree with just just about uh, exactly with that. We we might um, achieve a slightly higher uh, IRR currently, but um, between 12 and 20, we've had examples of both. Um, and I can't say finally until we um, end up exiting some of our large investments, but on an ongoing basis, um, somewhere in the neighborhood of 12 to 14 currently, in terms of an IRR. Jerry, can you uh, also comment on this Foreign Investors Council, uh, of which you've been recently elected the distinguished chairman? What is it that that offers the uh, international community that's doing business here, uh, as far as access and, and, and making change, positive change? Thank, thank you, Eva. I, I have been elected chairman. Uh, there, there is no reference to being distinguished in in the uh, <laughs> in the job requirements or the description. Um, the Foreign Investors Council works as a as a, a sort of uh, think tank, but in some degree, rather than blue sky thinking, uh, what what this council does is it works um, hand in hand with the government, and that means specifically ministries from transport, finance, economics, uh, to uh, justice as well, uh, to help craft policy. One of the, I think, really unique things about Latvia is, as you've seen this morning, uh, accessibility to the leadership within the country is very, very good. Uh, from the president yesterday to prime minister, minister of economics uh, today, um, you, can, you can see that uh, your interest gets the attention of the Latvian government. Likewise, foreign investors, um, we, we argue as foreign investors that we're simply really investors. There's the, the investor in Latvia should want almost the exact same thing as an investor from another country. Um, we enjoy a relationship with the government that um, looks like this. Every year we work on position papers on everything from uh, tax reform, which is an annual issue, macroeconomics, uh, educational reform, um, energy, um, court reform, insolvency, state-owned enterprises, uh, transparency, governance, uh, you name the topic and it's um, quite possibly something we have addressed. And we are finding that um, we used to do this once a year. In the end of May, we would make our presentations and the government would uh, take them under consideration and come back to us several months later. What we have found lately, however, is that um, the the work that is undertaken from each of these ministries has gotten so um, productive that the ministries include us in the in their stakeholder group. With the, whenever they have uh, issues of any um, real importance, uh, they will include the Latvian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the Employers Confederation, some trade unions, and always now the foreign investor community. What that means for for you is that. Um, you can see that the government quite seriously evaluates the, the needs of the foreign investment community. They take it very seriously and we, we are uh, faced with such a workload now that, that we can just about barely not keep up with it. And it's an ongoing basis uh, where if there's policy that needs to be improved, we have a very high chance of the government, if there's a good case to be made, not simply because we want lower taxes, for example, but to shift the tax burden from um, from labor to consumption, for example, the government has taken these recommendations very seriously. And we enjoy, as a foreign investment um, community, a, a healthy and ongoing, very close relationship with um, with. Uh, several of the ministries, and and I don't see that changing in the near future. 
Okay, thanks, Jerry. Any questions? If not, then I'll, I'll go back to Agnes. Uh, you mentioned the transport, the opportunities that are coming up in transport and, and infrastructure. Can you comment on some of these specific projects where uh, U.S. or other investors may want to get involved with? And also, all these infrastructure projects, or many of them, are Baltic wide, and your role is Baltic wide. Maybe talk about the bigger, the larger uh, context of these projects linking the Baltics um, with, with South and North. Yep. As a global provider of architecture and engineering services, we can't look at a single country market, especially when it's as small as Latvia, as, as a place to do business. Um, we have to look at it um, from a more of a regional sense, um, especially when it comes to these larger, larger infrastructure projects. Um, specific projects that, that will be emerging, um, I think, uh, that relate to transport will be, um, of course, these, this rail infrastructure improvements both going north-south uh, related to Rail Baltica as well as going east-west um, regarding improvements to the rail lines that connect Ventspil, Riga, and then everything heading, heading west, um, making those, uh, those uh, rail kind of corridors more robust, more smart. Um, you'll see more and more IT and technology and communications projects coming about on each of those corridors to make sure that both, both systems interact with one another. Um, the north-south rail is completely new infrastructure that hasn't been built in the Baltic states before, so I would imagine that uh, foreign investment will be, uh, will be needed um, not only to develop projects, possibly in PPP type of formats or other investment uh, and turnkey development formats, but, but straight construction of new large-scale infrastructure, all the equipment necessary, the, the production facilities for sleepers and for the rail itself, uh, the rolling stock that will need to be purchased on a completely new system where inventory doesn't exist currently in the Baltic states gives opportunities for anyone who is related to the rail sector, for example, to leapfrog and come into this market, establish themselves before the projects hit, understand the market, and, and potentially be there when these public tenders come out. Uh, I see a lot of roadway infrastructure work that will be necessary, um, and we are seeing foreign, foreign uh, construction companies coming here to build roads. Uh, to build ports, to build um, terminals in, in the ports. Um, there I see quite a bit of activity, all revolving around these transit hubs. And then, of course, the logistics companies, uh, as Mr. Taudinch mentioned, um, the amount of industries related to the logistics sector um, and this logistics cluster and transport cluster, um, there's opportunities that abound for, for haulers, freight forwarders, and those people who will build the, the uh, multimodal um, kind of facilities that are necessary to connect to roadway to rail, rail to air, air to sea, um, all of those different modes. So I see quite a bit of opportunity. All that opportunity is not only in Latvia, it is on a Baltic scale, and it's probably on a northern European scale. So we see a lot of Scandinavian companies coming here who have already established those relationships. I think it's time to see more and more U.S.-based companies also coming across the pond and, and investing their, their knowledge uh, as well as their uh, financial backing as well as the technologies that are necessary to build some of these larger infrastructure projects. Okay, thanks. Any questions from the audience? Please. On the, on the uh, question of uh, logistics, um, where do you see added value in terms of, uh, in the question of logistics, where do you see kind of uh, the potential to jump to increased added value? Uh, the presentation earlier, there was a discussion of the quantitative and the qualitative, mm -hmm. uh, with warehousing being cited as the qualitative. Are there other areas in terms of services that you see a potential for growth? Well, I've noticed at least recently being involved in the Rail Baltica project and thinking through how the operation of a completely new cross-border rail line would work 
in in the Baltic states. There's many un, unanswered questions about that. So the value add I'm seeing, at least in some of the logistics companies that are thinking through this corridor, is the technology that they can bring to to the to the um, to the transfer of goods from road to rail. Um, new technologies. I know there's a lot of uh, Javi's done quite a bit of investment in in looking how how to um, take refrigerated units off of off of trucks onto rail and transfer them even in short distances. They're doing it quite quite uh, successfully in Switzerland and, and Central Europe. That type of a technology to move food product up and down north-south is one that I see um, that will need kind of value-added new knowledge, new technologies. Um, throughput of, of goods, um, locating um, the, the transit and multimodal hubs in the right locations so as to service not only the bulk cargo but also this light lightweight cargo. Um, traditionally this has been a uh, what I would call heavy bulk cargo type of country. Um, all of the Baltic states have always been that and as the trend in transportation moves to a light cargo and moving moving um, goods and services, goods primarily with containers, all the technologies that come along with that movement of those containers, um, especially refrigerated, especially specialty containers, those that can migrate from road to rail quickly. Um, you decrease the, s the time of transfer, uh, more money can be made um, on each of those routes. So uh, speed to market is essential. Okay, maybe I'll, I'll ask one more question uh, of you. Uh, you've got 150 people working at the center, uh, possibly moving to 180, I understand, or even more. Well, can you characterize the, the human uh, potential, the, the human capital, the employees um, yep. here in Latvia? What's been your experience with, with Latvian people as your employees? Yeah. No, I, I think w one important thing to mention is that um, I built up the whole team with only people from this country. I mean, I'm, I'm the only expatriate. The whole the rest of the team is, uh, is is local. That doesn't mean it's, uh, it's it's only Latvians and Russians. I have a few other na nationalities as well, but I would say 95% uh, is is from this country. And um, my experience is that they are um, highly educated, um, uh, well qualified to to do the job, um, and they also have a very international outlook. Um, and maybe you've you've noticed that talking with people over the last few days, and you will do in the next few days probably. It, the Latvian people have a very much an, an external outlook, and maybe you don't even realize that. But as a foreigner coming in, uh, it's something that struck me uh, from the beginning. Um, it, it's also for that reason I think that uh, th these language capabilities uh, are, are so, so well developed. Um, but it also means that um, it was fairly easy for us to have a good cultural fit with the rest of the organization. We're, we're a U.S. company, uh, but we have a global operation. So we have, um, um, I don't know, probably about 40% of our employees are U.S.-based and 60% are elsewhere. So we, we are a very culturally diverse team, so we need to have an organization uh, supporting that uh, global SciTech organization that is sensitive to that uh, cultural diversity. Um, and what I've noticed is that the, the cultural uh, fit with the rest of the team works, works very well. Um, what I can also say is that um, as a foreign investor, you're, you're seen as an attractive employer to uh, a lot of people in Latvia. Um, because Particularly the, the younger people, they are looking for uh, international experience. They, they want to be able to reach out to the world. They like all these languages. Um, and as, um, as an organization, we were able to, to provide that to our employees, and that uh, enabled us to, to recruit uh, high-caliber high people. Um, I must say, when we arrived in Latvia, it was in, in the depth of the crisis. Uh, well, just after the depth of the crisis. So unemployment was, uh, w was very high, the official number is around 19%. That unemployment has come down, uh, I don't know where it is now, but it's around the 12% figure. 
Um, what I can say is uh, that we are still able to attract uh, very good talent uh, for, for the new positions that we are uh, adding to, uh, to the Shed Service Centre. So our experience has been, uh, has been positive for the people. Yeah. Okay, any more questions from the floor? From our, or are you all waiting to meet the foreign minister and, and have a nice lunch? So I think the lunch is starting in five minutes, so why don't we then um, end it? Uh, thank you um, for your attention. Have a great lunch. Thank you.